In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a project and how to consume OData service in uh, SAP AppGyver. Uh, if, you, if you're looking for a REST-based approach, I would recommend you to watch my other videos in the AppGyver uh, playlist. I will leave the link down below in the description. So let's get started. First of all, uh, you know, I need to log in, which I already did it, and let's create a new project. Uh, let's call this as YT OData Create. So as soon as we create a project, it will bring us on this page with the default title and a text. So first thing we'll do is we'll add a data source. And when we add data source, we will select OData integration. And in OData integration, we, ha we have an option to select which kind of authentication we are going to use. So uh, I, I will be using as a basic authentication. So I'll use my user ID and a password for my local system. And then uh, we have to enter a base URL. Now this is the base URL of a uh, OData service uh, from which the uh, the, the the framework is gonna uh, retrieve all the entities and it will show. And then we can pick which entity we want to use. So as soon as we get uh, you know past this stage, we will have all these entities returned, and then we can turn on the entity which we want to use. So in our case, we are going to use purchase orders. So let's turn on that and then save resources. So now our data source is uh, configured. Now we'll go back to our page. Uh, we don't need a title or the text. No cancel, not the page, uh, text. Okay, save. Now we will create a list from this uh, data source. So uh, for that, um, we can add in the page, go to the page variables and add a data variable select the data variable which is the purchase orders which we have generated from odata now in here when you use odata um, odata as a service you need to pass these values uh, even though not everything is mandatory the only thing which is mandatory is the authentication now uh, if you are doing it uh, in your project you should be creating the login screen and then you will be uh, storing those uh, user variable values in the uh, uh, app variable and then you map it here but just to save time i will be entering them here directly so i don't have to create a login page which i will be doing it after okay and save so now i have authentication i'm not going to use the filter condition ordering ordering or paging so we are good with that now we'll go back to our page here and then we will use, uh, first of all, we need a scroll container. So let's get the scroll container. And in the scroll container, we will show our uh, PO, uh, PO list as a list item. So let's pick the PO list item and put it in a scroll container. So as you can see it here, is it visible? Yes, as you can see it here in a, uh, in a scroll container. And then we will map a repeat width to our data source which is data variable and data source purchase orders and as you can see as soon as we map it shows um, a preview of multiple rows now since we mapped and it's a, a default or it's a pre-built uh, list item it has two values a primary and a secondary so primary label will pick as a let's say a PO, a PO ID and secondary will uh, pick as uh, let's say supplier name basic so and save now if we run this um, app it should work so let's go uh, to our launcher and we will launch it within the browser instead of testing on phone we go to there and you can see now we have our list PO list here now we can do uh, customizations and you know we can make it nicer uh, the first thing we need to do is like you know replace the empty page with something meaningful which we can do it here you go back to your page layout and on the top you see here as a page name so this we will call as a PO list save now it will change to PO list and this is a rendering by default because uh, we set it as a, a initial load and it keeps pulling, uh, pulling, 
and it keeps pulling that data every uh, i think uh, uh, five seconds or so because if you select uh, if you go to your page there under data variables and if you select here you will see under uh, flow functions there's a function to you know uh, retrieve a list like at a certain interval like here you can see the wait time is 5000 milliseconds it seems so five seconds so this you can detach if you just don't want to refresh it you know keep getting refreshed and hitting your system so you can just detach that one save now one of the thing um, i did not do it in my earlier demo uh, when i used the rest service uh, was the uh, filter criteria i did not add a filter criteria on a rest Apparently, it's a lot easier on a REST service than the OData, but I'm going to show you on OData and maybe in the next video, I will do it on a REST. So for OData, all you have to do is go in your uh, components uh, 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 pan here, pane here, and then drag drop the search bar, which will show it on the top. Now here we can say, uh, we can change the placeholder text to let's say search um, PO. And then we need to map this value. We have to store the uh, text in this box in a variable, and we pass this variable value to the service, so it, it will get filtered. For that, we will go back to our app. We'll go to page variables, and we'll create a page variable. Let's call this as a, a search value. Type text is fine. Save. Now we'll go back to our page, and here we will map that variable data variable, page variable, search value, and save, and save. So our data variable is ready. All we have to do is take this value, pass to the service, and uh, make a backend call. That we can do it on top of this um, uh, search icon. Yeah, you click there, you go down here in a flow function. And then, as we know, uh, as soon as user enters a, a text, they hit uh, search we have to make a call to the backend. So to make that call, we will go in here and we will use get record collection as a flow function. And then we'll link this. Now, as you can see here in the uh, uh, record collection, like what we saw in a basic view, it requires filter, condition, ordering, paging, paging authentication, and so on. So again, I did a hard-coded authentication. So that's what I'm going to do it here one more time but if you are doing it in your project you should be uh, creating a page and storing a user id password in a variable and then you should be assigning that which i will be uh, showing you in the next video so for time being we'll just use user id and a password so authentication part is okay now the filter condition so the filter condition is not enhanced uh, as of now so uh, what I see is it does not have a lot of options. Like for example, if you want to search based on um, a text, which needs to be have a substring of uh, as a, as a you know the the parameter to the URL, but the the current version of App Gaver doesn't have that. It just gives a plain basic uh, operators like equal, not equal, ignore case, and so on. So we'll use as a POID as equal. So add a condition, then you can select a property. Our property is POID, the condition type is equal, and then the compared value. This value is the one which we created a variable for, search value. So save that. So we are saying, take my search value and pass it as a POID to search on a backend, and save, and save. So our record collection call is mapped. Now we have to take this record or this result of this call and store it in the data source variable. So we'll go up again here in a flow function and we'll call a set data variable. Let's connect this, select that. And since we have only one data variable is kind of by defaulted set. And then the uh, record collection, what is the record? Uh, here, output from another node. So the value, this is the name of the variable, but we need to set the value. And the value is coming from the previous node, which is the get record collection. So we will select that, go here, and say output from value from another node. 
and the another node is the get record collection so select that collection records save and save so now if i run my application by default it will show me the list but let's say if i pick this po in a search and hit enter it will give me only a uh, one po because we send and now it's pulling that is because the uh, like i explained earlier uh the page let's turn that off so it doesn't mess up with our uh, result okay save go back so this is the initial load where we have all the po's then we take one po and search for one specific po now it gives us just one po so this is all for the, you know for this video i will uh, uh, add more uh, content uh, like you know uh, adding the authentication and then passing that to the uh, audit service and so on so thank you for watching see you in the next